Welcome to the Word Podcast. The Lord God has given us His Word. Let us learn it. Let us live it. Let us rejoice in it. Spread the Word. Blessings, everybody. This is Dale. Thank you so much for joining me today on the Word Podcast. We're continuing through our examination of the letter of 1 Timothy, Paul writing to his son in the faith. And we're at the fifth chapter, so we're making progress here. Uh, Paul is just firing off uh, these uh, commandments, these instructions, these directives, understandings as to how the body of Christ is supposed to be uh, working together, how we live together in the kingdom. And it's a letter for Timothy, First and Second Timothy. Paul wrote to Timothy. And I, actually, I'm doing Second Timothy right now in the local class and just got out of the class a while ago. And somebody asked, well, is this, are these letters just for Timothy or are they for us also? So what would you say if somebody asked you that question? These, these, both these letters, First Timothy and Second Timothy, we know that they're written to Timothy. Paul says that at the beginning of them. But are they also for us? So I'm going to give you a second to think. <clears throat> I could hum the Jeopardy theme music, I guess, right? So what do you think? Well, there were a lot of, uh, you know, insights, input, and things like this. But the bottom line is this. They're in the Bible. (laughs) The Lord left them in the canon of the scriptures. So that right there tells you that they are for the body as a whole. Uh, Likely they would have been received by Timothy. Timothy would have read them. And then he likely would have read them to the entire body. He said, hey, I've got a letter here from Paul. And they would have heard what Paul wrote to Timothy and would have heard uh, what Paul was teaching Timothy, the standard that was there. Then they also would have heard what uh, Paul was saying to Timothy about the church and how they're supposed to be living. So chapter 5, verse 1 begins with some uh, corrective things here. And it says this. Now remember, the Holy Spirit is the one that's leading Paul to write this to Timothy. Timothy and the church. Uh, are uh, reading this and understanding it. Do not sharply rebuke an older man, but rather appeal to him as a father. And so uh, Paul is telling Timothy how to relate to people. You know, in, in one place in these letters, he tells Timothy, don't let people look down upon your youth. So Timothy was younger. We don't know how old he was. By this time, I want to say he's 30, likely early 30s, something like that. So he says, with an older man, don't rebuke him. You notice he didn't say whether he was right or wrong. He could be wrong, but still don't rebuke. You appeal to him as a father. So he's talking about a a relationship. He's talking about a heart issue. It's far more important to appeal to somebody than sharply rebuke them, set them straight, and move on. So with older men, appeal to him as a father. To the younger men, as brothers. So the same way, if someone is younger than you, a younger man, don't sharply rebuke him. But appeal to him as a brother, as you would your own family member. Then verse 2, the older women as mothers and the younger women as sisters in all purity. So you notice that the the rebuking thing or the idea of correction carries to all of them. So don't sharply rebuke an older man or a younger man or an older woman or a younger woman. No, appeal to them. Okay? Appeal to them as you would appeal to your father. Appeal to them as you would appeal to your brother or to your mother or your sister. <coughs> now, all of this is to be done in all purity. Okay, a purity of heart and a purity of mind, a purity of spirit, okay? not with a secondary agenda, but you do it in sincerity and in honesty and in purity. But you notice that there's a need for a corrective to come about but just not from the point of view of a sharp rebuke. And this is in the context of uh, fellow believers, okay, within the body of Christ. Then in verse 3, 1 Timothy 5, verse 3, he says this, Honor widows who are widows indeed. Widows indeed, I-N-D-E-E-D. Okay, widows, so you're to honor them. Let me read the next verse, which is the, the balance of the sentence. So, Honor widows who are widows indeed, but if any widow has children or grandchildren, they must first learn to practice piety in regard to their own family and to make some return to their parents. For this is acceptable in the sight of 
God and to make some return to their parents. What's that all about? And it's acceptable on the side of God. What he's saying is, and we'll see more about this, and we've seen a little bit already, uh, there's widows, but there's widows indeed. A widow indeed is someone based upon this passage right here who doesn't have local children or grandchildren or family members that can take care of her, that can help her. Now, the reason I say local is that you'll see that there are widows that have children, but the children are unable to take care of them for whatever reason. They live a distance away in another country or something, for instance, okay? But the principle that's being shown here by the Lord is that it's the responsibility of the family to help take care, okay? To help take care of one another. We as the body of Christ have totally abdicated this in a couple of different ways. We actually find this to be an alien concept. And in most of our societies, we think it's the role of man's government to take care. Okay, We have actually allowed it to get to the point to where we think that it's the role of government to do that. And it's not at all the role of government to take care of widows and deeds or orphans or small children. Not at all. It's the role of the family and the role of the church. If a believing family uh, is unable to, to uh, take care of them, then the body of Christ steps in, whether they're unable because they're unwilling or they're just so poor they're not able to do that. But he tells us here to first learn to practice piety in regard to your own family. Okay? To practice piety. In other words, this is a role, this is a functioning, this is something that we're supposed to do. We're supposed to take care of of our parents. Now, it's interesting because it's widows indeed. If she has children or grandchildren, we're going to find out that there was a struggle. We've already seen that there were women that were being disruptive in some ways. Um, You know, they were coming to church in in their gold and their silver and their fancy hairdo and their fancy clothes and all that kind of stuff. They were coming to the corporate gathering and being distracting. It is believed that some of these were widows and that these widows were taking from the church coffers. You know, they're they're widows, so, you know, everybody, if you're a widow, you get to uh, tap into this. And Paul was saying, no, 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 not at all. Let the families first take care of it. If it's family, they can take care of it, that's fine. Then if the family can't take care of it, then the church will step in, okay? Tell you what, I'm going to stop right there. We'll continue this next time with some more about this widow talk. Again, I'm Dale. Thank you so much for being with me. Uh, I encourage you to go to my website. I do a daily blog. It's just my name, dalemore.tv. You can see the blog. I teach Bible uh, classes online, so you'll be able to find that type of thing. You'll find a link there if you want to support these times. I'd be so appreciative of that. You can find a place on a Patreon link right there where you can just check a button. And uh, thank you so much. I'll see you again next time. Goodbye.